Well, good Sunday morning to you. I absolutely love that song about singing a little louder. There's not an absence of a volume in our culture right now, but a lot of the volume is driven by fear or frustration. How much more important that God's people right now lift their voice in praise to the one who is still in control, even though we feel like we are not. And I'll tell you why it's important, because there's so many people who feel like they have no voice right now. And to be able to hear something that isn't born out of fear or frustration can be all the difference in their day or maybe in their life. And so let's just continue to lift our voice in praise to our Heavenly Father. Uh, I'm really glad that you're joining us today. Um, I'm hoping that you're staying connected to us on Facebook and Instagram and on our website. And even this morning, uh, uh, if you're watching live, uh, there's an opportunity to comment. And uh, if you were coming into our in-person gathering today and you saw someone you recognized, you would say hi to them. You're allowed to do that in the comment section. If you see somebody you recognize, just say good morning and welcome them. And of course, another great opportunity about the comments uh, section is if you have a question or you want to reinforce something that you believe encouraged you, you can put that into the comments section. It's a great source of encouragement to others. And so I would rec highly recommend that you do that. Uh, we're continuing our series in the parables, the short stories of Jesus. And today we're going to look at uh, the story of buried treasure. It's found in Matthew chapter 13. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had, and he bought it. Uh, what's interesting about this story is uh, Jesus didn't share all of his stories in a mass public format. There were some stories he reserved for more private conversations. And this is one of those private conversation moments. It's, it's an intimate story shared with very close friends. And he tells us that there's a man. Now, we don't know for sure that he was plowing, but to find a treasure in a field that didn't belong to him, that's probably what he was doing. He was a hired hand, and he's plowing. Plowing is hard work in the ancient world, even if you had an animal to pull the plow. And then he hits something beneath the surface. That's very frustrating because that can damage the plow. And it means more work because you're going to have to dig that out. It's usually a rock, and it will obstruct not only future growth of plants, but it can also do more damage in the effort to plow. So that has to be dug out. But when he starts digging this obstruction out, what he discovers is that there is this unbelievable treasure worth more than anything he's ever seen in his life. And he's, he's just overwhelmed by his discovery. And you might wonder why a treasure would be buried in a field. And the answer is because in the ancient world, they, they didn't have banks like we do. And so you had to find creative ways to hide treasure. We have no idea how long that treasure had been there, but quite a while. And he's got a problem. He can't just take this treasure. It's not his field. And so he comes up with a plan. And the plan is to go liquidate every single thing that he owns and to get as much capital as he possibly can and to make an offer on that field, an offer that is so good that the owner of the field would not turn him down. And he does it, and the Bible says he does it with joy. Like he's actually excited about what he's doing. And then Jesus moves right into a second story. And this is a story about a merchant who is seeking fine pearls. Now, this isn't just someone out looking for a sale. This is someone who's very knowledgeable of pearls, uh, kind of a, a master in that, in that trade. And he finds one that is beyond the value of anything that he's ever seen before. Just the beauty of it, the perfection of it, the color of it, the shape of it, everything about it just screams how valuable it is. And so he has only one thought. He has to possess that pearl. And so he, once again, he sells everything that he has. He liquidates all of his possessions, and he makes an offer on that pearl. And the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, he did it joyfully. He's not regretting this decision. This is the smartest, wisest thing he's ever done in his life. So I have a question. Like, what would mean that much to you? 
you would consider selling everything you have. Right? Not just your electronics or maybe some outdated clothing, but your car, right? your house, um, heirlooms, family heirlooms. What would you consider doing that? And another question is, does God's kingdom mean that much to you? And the reason I ask the question is because there's a lot of per people, this is their interpretation of this parable. They think that this is about people who, as they're going through life, they kind of stumble across the gospel. And then they consider selling everything that they have to obtain it. But there's a problem with that interpretation. And that is that you can't earn grace. You can't buy grace. That's what makes it grace. It's a gift. God is the one who found you. You are the treasure. You are the thing beyond all value that when he discovered, he was willing to give up everything joyfully just to redeem you. It's absolutely amazing. This concept that, that God would give up everything, all the glory that he had, he would let it go. He would take on shame and he would do it joyfully. Is, there's actually a passage of scripture that says that, right? About Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. If you ever want to know how much God loves you, all you have to do is look to the cross. It's where he gave up everything for you. And throughout history, God has used the kind of language that demonstrates his value for his people. In, in the Old Testament, you see a phrase that, that percolates up from time to time through the prophets as they were speaking for God. And he would call his people a special treasure to me above all. A special treasure to me above all. That is what you are to God. Now, the story of the pearl actually gives us a little more uh, information here. And that is the way a pearl is formed is actually the result of an injury. Um, in an oyster, a, a sand, a piece of sand, a granule of sand gets inside and it creates an irritation to the oyster. And so it begins to produce this mineral, uh, colorless and, and white, to keep surrounding with layer after layer after layer to try to stop this thing from irritating and doing any more damage. And this is a really powerful insight to this story is that wounds can become the source of something valuable. Let me say that again. Wounds can become the source of something valuable. I think sometimes we just want to recover from a wound or get past a wound. And we often miss the value that God can bring in our lives. In fact, the truth is, is that everything in God's kingdom of value came at great price. It was a great wound. Isaiah, the prophet, said it this way in chapter 53. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds. So why would God endure this kind of wounding for us? This letting go of everything for us. And what I want you to know is love is the only explanation for what we mean to God. If you want to know why you mean so much to God, it, there's only one reason. It's just how much he loves. And the challenge is we often don't see ourselves as very valuable. Uh, there have been circumstances that have happened in our life that communicate that we are worth less than other people. Uh, sometimes there are situations where we lose something of value and we think our value went down with it. And here's what I want you to know. When you are feeling like you are worth less, it doesn't mean that God loves you less. Our estimate of our value is not what determines our value in God's eyes. It's his value. So we've all done things or failed to do things that have actually brought some kind of wound to Christ. And I know we can feel a lot of guilt about that, but just think about it for a minute. Look what Christ does with wounds. It's amazing the kind of healing and transformation that he can bring into our lives. So maybe you're experiencing a wound right now. I would just encourage you, look to Jesus. Trust him with that pain 
that sorrow, that difficulty that you're going through. He can do amazing things with it. Now, when you start looking for God's kingdom, you can pull out a map on your phone or your tablet or your computer. You can open an old-fashioned map of paper, and uh, you're not going to find a continent or a country boundary line of the, the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is also not a compound of structures, a, a building. Uh, we, we create buildings. We're expanding a facility right now so that we can worship God and invite other people. But, of course, God's kingdom is not limited to our address or to the structures that we create. No, God begins something in us, and that begins to affect the things between us. That's where the kingdom begins to grow and expand. And that begins to invade the world around us. That can make all the difference. So you need to know you are a treasure of unequal value to God. There's nothing that he thinks is more valuable than you. Now, if you don't know your value, then the tendency will always be to settle for less or to sell yourself short. And this happens a lot in our culture. When we don't think much of ourselves. that's when we do the things we most often regret. And so God wants us to see. Jesus is telling this private conversation, this personal story. He wants to drive this point home that you are of unbelievable value to your Heavenly Father. So the challenge is, is once you know you are loved that much by someone, that can make you uncomfortable. What would you withhold from the one who withheld nothing from you? That's where the challenge point comes in for us. And quite honestly, that's where some people really begin to struggle. Some people believe that the gospel is what you give everything up for. But that's not how Scripture teaches it. This is not some kind of a sales pitch by God that he will cover the first installment no interest, no payments for six months. And then you can have this. Jesus told us on the cross, it was finished. It was paid in full. There's no more payments. You're not buying something of God's grace. But you can be motivated by what he's done for us. You can be inspired by what he's done for us. And that has a huge influence on how we Act. This is how uh, Paul said it in, in Philippians chapter 3. Whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Now, it sounds like maybe there could be some regret there, but he clarifies it in the next statement. I consider them garbage. This is, not, this is the stuff I throw away. This is the stuff I leave at the end of the driveway. This is the stuff I don't need or want anymore. That I may gain Christ. Be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Paul didn't think he'd lost anything of value. He thought he had gained everything that truly mattered. That's what happens when we experience grace for ourselves. Jesus is transforming individual lives. He's bringing people into his kingdom. And those transformed lives begin to influence the world around us. And he considers these transformed lives a precious treasure to him. He calls it his church. And one of the great uh, options for the church, one of the great benefits of the church is that we can be a blessing to others. That's why we're here. Uh, God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. We're not here just to make sure everybody gets it the way we prefer it. We can be a blessing. Now, in my life, I've had quite a few moments when I lacked the courage or confidence to stand up, to speak up, to show up. and. Um, when I think back over those moments, quite honestly, there's usually some regret associated with it. Uh, don't get me wrong. There have been times I did stand up, speak up, and show up, and I regretted that too. But for the most part, um, it requires a kind of boldness. And here's what I want you to know. The secret of boldness is knowing your value. 
That's where our confidence, that's where our courage, that's where our boldness comes from. And if we don't know our value, then whatever thoughts we're processing about feeling worth less winds up paralyzing us. We're not able to move forward. The early church was bold, and it wasn't because their circumstances were so good or they had so many resources. It's just they knew how loved they were by God. They understood that. And when you know your value to the most important, most loving, most generous being in the entire universe, boldness happens. They understood God moves towards us without reservation. He doesn't have any regrets. He didn't wait. He wasn't paralyzed. He moved towards us, and he frees us from anything that would keep us from moving into our future. Now, I'm sure if you've spent much time online, uh, you probably have noticed some angry people these days. There's, I don't know if there's any more of them, but there, it seems like they're saying more. And our world doesn't really need any more angry, ranting people. It does desperately need more people who know their value, and they're living that out. It's a very different way to live. That when you see the cross, you see your value. When you open scripture and you allow the the word of God just to wash over you. When you spend time in prayer, not just letting God know what you need help with, but listening for any direction that he would give, and you're willing to act in obedience to that, it's astonishing what a difference that makes in our lives and in our world. One of the great things, one of the great things that happen when you realize your worth to God, your value, is that you begin to realize the value of others to God. That once you see someone else through the eyes of the, uh, through the lens of the cross, <laughs> it just matters. And it makes a difference. And so I would like to just take a moment and pray with you today. Uh, Father, there has not been a shortage of voices that wanted to recalibrate us so that we would feel less than maybe them or someone else. And the truth is, is that religion in general and the church more specifically has not been immune to using some of those tactics. That it seems as though we can get compliance by making people feel less and then they'll work harder. But you break through this mold that the world has created. And you help us see our value through the cross. You gave up everything. And you did it joyfully. Because that's how much we mean to you. Would you help us to see every single person we come in contact with in our lives means that much to you too. In Jesus' name. Amen.